Before we get into the tutorial, I do want to mention that I stream over at twitch.tv slash teamoryt every now and then. So if you want to go and check it out, then go ahead. You can ask me questions about, you know, tutorials and stuff, or you can just hang out. Anyway, enjoy the video. All right, so when you're getting your cinematics, you have sort of two options. So the first option is to go to your replays and then find the, find the replay where you um, did the 1v1. So I've already saved mine. It's all the way down here. So your first option is to find it and then to use this and get the cinematics from here. Or if you can't do that, if it's corrupted or if you can't find the right cinematic that you want in, in the replay, then you can obviously remake it yourself. I'm going to use my replay because I can't remake it myself at the moment. I don't have the skin that I was fighting. So I'm just going to look for a part in here that I can use because I think that's the easiest for me. But basically you just want to load into the replay and if you haven't already just uh, jump into a game in each skin. So have one game in your skin and one game in the skin that you're fighting. And then on one game in creative you just want to pull out your weapon while jumping and on the other game you want to pull out your weapon while walking for example. So I'll, sh I'll show you why that is uh, in in this. I mean, you can you can obviously change it up. It it depends really on what kill you get, for example, because uh, the the one that Flea did in his Valentine montage is he was jumping when he got the kill, so his player was in the air, and then the person he was fighting wasn't jumping, so that player was on the floor. So it really depends on what your player is doing. So just look at your clip and then copy what your player is doing, but make it as them just pulling out their weapon and then the opponent pulling out their weapon. So I'm just going to do roughly the same thing, but with this. I'm just going to find a point where my opponent pulls out their weapon and find a point where I pull out my weapon. And I'm just going to record the cinematic. And I'm going to show you how you have to record the cinematic as you do that. Okay, so once you load into replay mode, you just want to find where you um where you want your cinematic to be. So I'm just going to look for any point, any point where I pull out my weapon. Other, th other than here, because that's a little bit, it's got the player behind me. So I'm just going to follow my character until they pull out their weapon. Okay, so I found the point that I want to uh, take the cinematic on. Right here, I take out my gun. It's not going to be perfect for this one because I'm obviously not really set much up. I've just taken a random clip that I have in a 1v1 thing and I've and I've made a cinematic for it. It's not going to look perfect. But obviously, if you do it, you're going to be putting it in a montage and you're going to um, have all the skins ready and have all the stuff uh, ready for the cinematics. And you're, you're probably it's probably better to stage the cinematics rather than actually um, use the clips just because, especially for something like this. But I just don't have the skin of my... Um, of the person that I kill, so I can't actually like do that. I can't stage it properly if I don't have the skin of the other person. So yeah, so I'm just gonna use a random clip. It's obviously not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna show you roughly how to do it, which should be good enough. So I'm gonna lower the drone speed to minimum. Make sure you're on drone attach, so just click on this and click on drone attach. And then just come over, turn this off by pressing the little eye, and then come as close as you can to the character like this. So I'm gonna go right here, I think this is good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the drone speed a bit by pressing the equals button so I can pan up and down easily. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play. And as soon as I press play, so you've got to make sure you're on the slowest speed here for the uh, character so that they pull out the gun really slowly. When I press play, I'm going to pan down and it's going to follow the character and it's going to follow their gun opening. So pan down at a constant pace. This is really hard on keyboard and mouse. But if you have a controller, just uh, hold the down button and it will pan down. But obviously for me on keyboard and mouse, it's quite hard. So it might look a little bit choppy. I might have to redo it a few times. And if you're on keyboard and mouse, you might have to redo it if you can't get it the same. But I'm just going to try and go as slowly as I can and pan down. It won't look terrible in the thing because we're going to time remap it. And we're going to make it look a little bit nicer in the editing software. But yeah, this is roughly what we want to do. So I'm just going to press play with the space bar and then I'm going to pan down. So like this. So I'm going to take that. That That's not really the best i'm just going to take it as it is and i'm going to move on to the next skin now it doesn't seem that i'm going to be able to switch player I'm, that means that i'm probably not going to be able to do it with um with the drone attached thing we're going to have to just do it with drone free but i have found a point where the player pulls out their gun if you have this on by the way i turned it on to look for the player if you have it on you just want to come over to here turn off player outlines and then turn off and then come over to here and turn off nameplates and then everything should be fine but i'm just going to get back to the position that i was right in front of him like this slower my drone speed so it's a little bit easier just slowly get to the right spot okay so right here i want to do it from right here it doesn't have to be exactly the same it is better if you can get it the same but it's not going to be quite as easy so we're just going to do exactly the same thing but instead of uh, going uh, down we're going to pan up so that it does the opposite so i'm going to start here and i'm going to pan up really slowly all right so you ready So just like that, that's roughly what you have to do, really. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit easier if you set it up yourself. 
rather than just using a random cinematic from a random 1v1. Because I, I literally cannot get the skin at the moment. It's not in the shop or anything. I can't buy it and I don't have the skin. So I'm just using a random 1v1 that I have. Anyway, I'm going to take those cinematics. Hopefully you can do roughly the same. You're going to have to just set it up if, if you really want it to be perfect. If you look at Flea's videos, it's clear that he's set up the cinematics rather than just used what's in game. And I definitely recommend doing that just because you can get it. It'll be a little bit cleaner and you know exactly what you're going for when you go in. If I had the skin, I would show you how to do that, but I don't. So I'm just going to jump into the editing software. We're going to use After Effects and I'll see you in the editing software. All right, so now you've got your cinematics. You just want to come into After Effects and then you just want to grab your cinematics. So bring them in and then just click and then come over to the project on the top left. Click on them, click on one of them, either one, and then come over to where you get the cinematic. So I've already done mine. You just want to come into where you get the cinematic the start put your pinhead to the start and then click this right here and put your pinhead to the end of where you get the cinematic and click that then drag it on and do the same with the other one where you where you start the cinematic and where you end it and then just come over to the left and drag it on as well and now now i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna zoom in a bit and i'm gonna line them up like this it doesn't matter which one's on top and which one's on bottom but um it's really up to you Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to align them with where I want them to be. So I want this one right here to be on the right and the one on the bottom to be on the left. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the top clip and click P and then drag it across like this. Drag the left one across. And then I'm going to click on the bottom clip and click P as well and then drag it to the left like this. And just keep dragging it until it's right. This looks about right to me. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to mask the clip on the right. So to mask the clip on the right, it's the top clip, as we just found out. What we're going to do is we're going to click on it. We're going to click on the pen tool up here. We're going to hold down Alt and then scroll out a bit so we have so we can see more. And we're just going to click at the bottom and then at the top right here. And then like this and make a little uh, polygon like this. So now we've got a box around this one and this is all that you're going to see. So now we can check, is this the middle? I think that looks like the middle actually. I might have first tried that. But if, if you don't think it's the middle, you can um, just highlight them all by pressing shift and clicking on all the corners. And then you just come over to the main corner, which will be the bigger square, and then just drag it. So I think this looks all right. This is probably roughly the middle. So now what you want to do, now you've got this, you need to add the Sabre effect. Sabre is a free plugin. I've already had a video on Sabre before. So um, it's a free plugin. I'll leave a link in the description to Sabre. What we're going to do now is we're going to have the sort of lightning looking thing in the middle. And to do that, we just want to right click on here. Click new and then click solid and then make a black solid like this. I'm going to call it Sabre. Just like this. Click OK and now put it on top. Now what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to drag this down to size. Bring it across. Okay, so now we've got this on top. What we're going to do is we're going to go to effects and presets and search Sabre. So remember, you want to download Sabre. I'll leave a link in the description. It's free. You just want to drag it onto the clip and it's going to look like this. And then what you want to do, you want to come down to render settings and then you want to come down to composite settings and change that to transparent. And now you just want to make sure you're on the screen normally by coming down here and pressing fit. And then you just want to find the top and bottom of the sort of cut like this. And you just want to drag the saber effect to it. I think I accidentally blended that perfectly. Hold on, I need to find a point. There you go. There's a point where it's not blended. So you just want to click on this little target at the top, drag it to the top, click on the little target at the bottom, drag it to the bottom. So now the saber's on and it's perfectly in the middle like this. What we're going to do is we're going to make the saber look like Flea, how Flea has it. And to do this, you just want to come over to the left on saber. You just want to click on this and then come down to Jin. Like this. And then you just want to come over here and then change the color and change it to light blue because that's what flew, f flew. That's what Flea does. He has it like this. And then I'm going to change all the settings and I'm going to show you what they are. So the first thing that that you want to do is you want to change lower the glow bar so i'm going to put it to 0 0.16 and now what you want to do is you want to come down a little bit more now you want to change the core size to 2.8 or at least th this is what i did i tested it quite a bit and tried my hardest to get it to look like what flea has so yeah so you want to just roughly copy what i do if you don't like it you can change it a little bit it's really up to you then you want to click down distortion and click down glow distortion and you want to just copy this it's a 19 and then you want to change this to energy you want to change the noise scale to 40 and then you want to come down to core distortion drag that down and then you want to copy these settings you want to change the wind speed to 0 0.1 you want to change the noise speed to 0 0.32 and you want to come down and change the motion blur to 3 right here okay and now you have roughly what flea has as his uh, saber 
So it should look just like this. So I'll play it and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so there you go. That is the Sabre done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to time remap the clips so they look a little bit nicer because at the moment they're a little bit boring. So to do that, you just want to click on the top clip or the bottom clip. Do whichever one first. It doesn't matter. Right click, then click on time, then enable time remapping, then put a keyframe at the start, and then find where you want it to start. So I'm going to start here, right where I'm looking at the feet. And then I want to come to the end and place another keyframe. And then I'm going to end a little bit lower, I think, probably here. And then you just want to click on both the keyframes. So, so uh, shift click on the keyframes so that you highlight them both. Then press F9 on your keyboard. And then you want to come over to here. Click on this little graph. And you should see uh, this. And you should see this on the graph. So I'm going to zoom in a bit and show you. If it doesn't look like this, you just want to come over to here and click on edit value graph instead of edit speed graph. Because it will look like this and that's a little bit um, hard to use. So just click on edit value graph. Then click on this first keyframe here. Drag this uh, hand up here and then drag the other hand down. Until there's a sort of, inc there's an increase in speed and then it should go roughly flat in the middle like this. So increase and then flat and then increase again at the end. And then just watch it through. I'm actually going to uh, move the second the second keyframe keyframe a bit further. Okay, like that. So that we have a higher increase in speed. I'm going to move the first one. I'm going to leave the first one where it is actually. But yeah, I'm going to do this again. Just change it up a bit. So we want it to be basically flat in the middle again. Like this. We don't want it to go backwards in the middle. We don't want it to really go forwards. We want it to sort of freeze in the middle if we can. So yeah, this is what I like. So... So it's quick, then stops, then goes quick again. So fast, stops in the middle, then goes quick again. We're going to do the same thing for the left. So we're just going to basically copy what we did. Right click, time, enable time remapping, put a keyframe. We're going to go backwards a bit. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go all the way to the end. And I'm going to scroll forwards a bit. I'm going to start. I'm going to end right where he's about to finish. We're going to put the keyframes to the end. Shift click on both. Press F9 on the keyboard. Click on one of them. And then here we go. We're back on this screen again. We just want to copy what we did, so bring this one up, bring the other one down, like this. This goes back a little bit, so we want to make sure it's straight instead of uh, going back. So like this. Okay, this looks good to me, so I'm going to watch it through. So yeah, this is roughly decent. I don't think I got the best cinematics for this. I could have got better cinematics, but I, I sort of made do with what I had. I didn't really have much. I don't have a clip or anything. These are just uh, this is just one v ones from a while ago. So I'm just trying to show you how to do the cinematic because I don't actually have any clips for this. But yeah, this is what we got so far. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually put motion blur on it. So to do that, so it's sort of motion blurs at the start and at the end because that's what Flea does if you look at his uh, videos. And to do that, what you're going to do is I'm going to add S underscore blur motion which is a sapphire effect and then I'm just going to go the I'm going to keyframe the 2z distance I'm going to put that to to 0 0.8 and I'm going to put that to 0 0.8 at the start and then I'm going to go and then I'm gonna press a keyframe and then go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and put this to 1 so it looks like this so I'm going to press U now I'm going to click on the clip and press U and it'll bring up the keyframes I'm going to actually drag this out a bit and then I'm going to press F9 to easy ease like this and then it should look a little bit like this and then I'm just going to copy the effect onto the other clip and it will look exactly the same. So this is what it should look like. And you can obviously do the same thing at the end if you want. So just copy the keyframes to the end like this. So just like this. Doosh, doosh. And I'm going to copy it again on the bottom clip. And this is what it will look like. So it blurs in and then blurs out at the end. And that is basically, uh, that's roughly what Flea does with his cinematics. Obviously, the cinematics is going to be better when you do it. You're going to have the kill afterwards or the kill before the song. You're going to obviously add sound effects as well. And you're probably going to have a, a color correction over it rather than just raw clips. But um, this isn't about color correction, this story. This is just about how to sort of do the split and have the um, cinematics in there with the split and the sort of saber as well. Because I think it's important to know that this is saber. This is what this is, and you uh, you do this in After Effects. I don't think you can use Saber in Premiere Pro. Not that I know of anyway. I'm pretty sure it's only an After Effects uh, effect. But yeah, I hope that was helpful enough. If you want me to do a, a video about sort of other things that Flea uses, like if you want me to try and uh, show you how to use the color correction, for example, I think I was going to do a video on, you know, how he changes the color of his skin. 
because sometimes in you know in Eclipse his skin's a different color. So I'll show I can show you how to do that if you want, and I can also show you a few other things. But yeah, this is basically all I wanted to show you. You know the sort of a uh, change with the saber in the middle and then the um, blur before and afterwards. So it's like a transition of blur in and out. But yeah, obviously this doesn't look good. I sort of just whipped up the cinematics in a few minutes because I didn't have the um, didn't have the right one v one setting. This was literally just me playing some casual one v ones. I didn't have like a perfect map without you know stuff in the background. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned a little bit. I hope you learned you know how to use saber and that. And I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.